What's up everybody, Major Retired Richard Ojeda here, and you are watching Ojeda Live. Countdown achieved. It's time for Ojeda Live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of OGN Live. We got Maureen on here first, followed by Roy Pilavar from Jupiter, Florida. We got Shelly Gabish with her blue waves. We got Jonathan Kramer with us. We got my secret squirrel, David Weaver, as always. Donna Markham from West Virginia is here. We got Etta Russell with her pretty smile. We got Rima Butcher on here. We got Patricia Sooms with us. We have Matt Knight from Pennsylvania, Jennifer Peck from Southern California. Timothy Ostromek is on here from Dallas, Texas. Michael Combs is on here. What's going on, Michael Combs? I believe you're from uh, Oklahoma. We got Pamela Kelly on here from Pennsylvania. Joe Hollingsworth is with us. We got Dan Otto, uh, Airborne. We got Jen Crane from North Kakalaki. We got Edna Aldridge in here from Ohio. We got Nick Wandelt on here as well. We have uh, Richard Metz from Parkersburg, West Virginia. R.D. Schroederdell is with us. We got Ethan Cruz uh, is on with us. We got Sharon Tensher with the Blue Waves. Uh, we have uh, Barbara Moose is on here with us. And Artis Caverlin is with us. And Felicia Jones. So everybody make sure you're hitting the thumbs up. Hitting the hearts, we're like 120 away from hitting our number. So let's continue to try to get more people to tune in and follow uh, Ojeda Live on both Facebook and on YouTube because that matters. And also make sure that you're hitting the thumbs up and the hearts throughout the entire 30 minutes because that matters too. How are you doing there, Glenna Marley? Glad to have you on here. All right, folks, let's go ahead and just jump on in. The Biden administration is doing something that I absolutely agree wholeheartedly. And guess what? It's not doing anything for me. Because guess what? Uh, when a president does something that helps other Americans out, I have to say I'm very supportive of that. And if it doesn't help me, at least somebody I know is being helped. And what I mean is, is that the Biden administration is about to uh, forgive another $7.4 billion in student debt relief that will impact over 277,000 borrowers. And once again, folks, you know, you can you can sit and gripe all you want and say that this is uh, socialism. It's about damn time that we have a president that actually wants to do something for the actual people. It doesn't happen for the most part in terms of when, when people are president of the United States. They always do all kinds of stuff to the filthy rich, especially if they're Republicans. They always make sure that they give all the filthy rich all the money, pay off their debts, and basically give them a big chunk of change that's going to come on the backs of the working class citizens. But at least we have a president now that's actually stepping out, trying to support unions wholeheartedly, trying to help people that have been preyed upon by predatory loans, which is exactly what these are. You know, when you are 18 years of age, there's a lot of things that they won't let you do. But make no mistake about it. They have no problems allowing you to sign on the dotted line for a student loan that could be $120,000 with literally like 19% interest. Uh, and it is very, very predatory. And once again, like I said, you know, I have a family member that paid the bare minimum. And the bare minimum wasn't nothing to laugh about. Uh and you can say, well, you need to pay more than the bare minimum. But guess what? If you don't have a job that provides the kind of money for you to be able to basically send more money. You know, there's a lot of people in this country that are working their asses off. Some of them working more than one job and are barely making it from month to month. You know, you guys want to talk about like inflation and stuff. And the truth is inflation is down. But there's a lot of underhanded stuff that's actually taking place in this country. Did you guys uh, find any of the uh, Girl Scout cookies this year? Did you notice something different about the Girl Scout cookies? The boxes were smaller. And if you opened them up, there were less cookies. Uh, that's a fact. And it's not just the Girl Scouts that's doing this. If you go into the stores, look at the boxes of cereal. Boxes of cereal are actually coming in smaller packages. There are all kinds of things that we are purchasing now at the grocery store that's actually coming in sp smaller packages, and we're getting less, but we're paying the same as we was when it was in the bigger packages. And if you don't realize that, well, 
you're not paying attention. And oh, by the way, these companies and these corporations are more than happy to look at you and tell you it's the damn president that's doing it, when in reality, they're doing it. They're the ones that are doing it. it. has nothing to do with Joe Biden. Inflation is down. It's the fact that they realize that they can continue charging everybody much more because everybody's going to blame it on the president and not look at them and blame them. And that is an absolute, absolute fact that is going on today. And I am absolutely spot on. And I guarantee you, I am absolutely 100% right. This is life-changing for those preyed upon by predatory loans. You know, when I contacted my brother-in-law and he let me know that he just had his student loans forgiven, it was as if somebody took a huge weight off of his shoulders. And I'm going to tell you right now, you know what? My family member has done so much for people in the communities. That's a fact. He helped me establish a nonprofit and we sent over 6,000 kids to school with new shoes on their feet, served over 10,000 meals, pulled over 1,000 tires out of the creek, did all kinds of things. And you know what? He's a person that absolutely de deserves to get relief from the horrific, daggone college debt that was literally wrapped around his throat, that was literally cutting off the air that he breathes. And that's a fact. So I'm very, very happy for him, and I'm happy for so many other people out there that literally... Let me tell you something. If you're rich, you don't have to worry about this. But there's a lot of people out there that knew that the only way they're ever going to elevate themselves out of poverty is if they go to college. And that's what they did. And they took predatory loans and they went to college and they're still having a rough time because once again, the predatory loans are still hanging around their neck. But the moment that they took that away, life got so much better. Folks, there's there's so many things about being in debt. And I'm going to tell you that, you know, when you make the decision that you want to get out of debt, uh, the only way to do it is to start attacking one bill at a time. You look at one bill and you say that you're going to do everything in your power to pay that bill off. And the moment that that bill is paid off, you automatically roll that money into the next bill and you pay that off. And let me tell you something, as you keep going, it gets much easier and the bills start dropping faster and faster and faster. And then you start basically put, uh, going after your, your car debt because make no mistake about it. That works too. If you can pay more than the, the, the monthly payment, it's going to benefit you greatly. And the next thing you know, you've then paid off all your credit card debt. You've paid off your vehicle debt. Maybe the only thing you own on, own on is your home and you can pay extra for that too if you want to and pay that off early. But let me tell you something, when you get to the point in your life where you're actually seeing the fruits of your labor and you're paying things off and you realize now you have the ability to establish a savings account. Remember, folks, there are many people in this country, like 75% of the people in this country cannot get their hands on $500 cash if they have an emergency. And that is a horrible place to be. And a lot of people in this country are in that situation. And that's why it's important to start paying things off and start putting things toward uh, uh, your savings account, putting money towards your taxes. So that the following year, if you owe taxes, you can pay it without having to worry about the IRS looking at you like, you know, you got to give us our money. There's all kinds of things that you can do. You know, every single paycheck that I get, my wife takes a percentage of that and sticks it in a tax account. And every time we pay taxes, we always have the money for taxes. But let me tell you something. When you finally get to that point where you're actually feeling like you've finally learned how to survive without being bogged down in debt, it is a beautiful place to be. And I'm telling you the truth. Not only is Donald Trump on trial tomorrow, but Giuliani also is being deposed as well. So uh, both of them, uh, I hope they both rot in prison. I hope they both die in prison uh, because as far as I'm concerned, they are both threats. Uh, Rudy Giuliani may have had the country fooled at one time, but he has absolutely thrown his entire legacy in the garbage and will be known as somebody who did just that throw their entire reputation in the friggin' trash. And I have no pity 
for Rudy Giuliani. I have no pity for John Eastman being disbarred. I have no uh, uh, pity for Elena Haba. I have, and, and I hope that Donald Trump doesn't pay her everything to the owes her. And I definitely don't have no pity for anybody in the Trump family. Truth Social has lost all of its gains since it began trading. So Truth Social come out and they said, this is going to put six trillion dollars, no, no, sorry, not trading, six billion dollars into Donald Trump's pockets. And since basically going live on the stock market, they have lost everything. There is nobody getting anything from the Truth Social stock. This is just one more thing like Trump the vodka, Trump steaks, Trump university, Trump's bullshit golden sneakers, and daggone truth social. If Donald Trump has his hand in it, you can guarantee without a doubt, and you can feel pretty confident in saying so, that it's going to absolutely shit the bed. That's absolutely without a doubt. Everyone who bought stock and Truth Social is losing money. Nobody is nobody's winning. Nobody is making out. Truth Social is dropping. And you know what? That's what happens when you realize that it's nothing more than a apparatus for somebody, one man, to basically just go and spew nonsense and bullshit. And that's all it's for. Nobody is, is, is communicating back and forth on Truth Social like you do on Facebook and things like that. People follow Truth Social because they're either too stupid and want to hear what their orange lord and savior has to say a thousand times a day, or they're there just to watch this dumbass crash, and he's crashing, and that's an absolute fact. And everybody who put money behind Truth Social you deserve to get nothing, you dumbasses. This is what happens when you back the biggest turd ever. And that is who Donald Trump is. And that's who he's always been. And that's a fact. Republicans are acting pissed off because of student debt relief. That's right. You know, Republicans are not happy that people other than the billionaires and, and multimillionaires are getting something. The Republicans never have a problem when shit tons of money are given to the rich. They never say nothing. They say that's fine. But if anything is given to the people, they are against it. I mean, just go ahead and look at how so many states have already killed free lunch programs for children. You literally think that, how do I make this state better? How do I make the country better? I don't know. Let's take food away from poor kids. I mean, literally, that's how you are. And it's not like, I, I, I can't say that's how you act. It's how you are. You guys do it. You constantly do it. And it's an absolute shame. But they're pissed over student debt relief but they have no issues paying off the debt of the richest amongst us. Remember when Donald Trump a couple of weeks ago was caught on camera where he was at Mar-a-Lago and he had a whole group of very, very, very wealthy people. And he said, you people, some of you people are very, very rich, but have no fear. We're going to pay off your debts and we're going to give you another big tax break. Do you guys remember that? Because if you don't, you think I'm full of shit, you can Google it and you can find Donald Trump saying just that. You guys are filthy, filthy rich, but have no fear. We're going to pay off your debts if I win and we're going to give you another big chunk of money. Do they deserve that? Have they done something to earn that kind of money? Because the truth is, is that if the top filthy rich would have done something for the middle class in this country, maybe we would be willing to give them a tax break and then work to pay it off. But the truth is, is they don't do jack shit for us, but Donald Trump's going to give them another big tax break. And oh, by the way, remember that Donald Trump's big gift to the filthy rich when he became the president of the United States was to put $7.8 trillion on the backs of the working class citizens so that he could give a shit ton of money to the filthiest of the rich. So if you don't believe me, all you got to do is watch the video and see how many members of Congress got their debt forgiven. 
These people want to tell you that they can't stand student debt. But do you remember the PPP loans? Because the truth is, is if you do, then you should remember all of these jackasses in Congress, all these Republicans. March the train wreck. Green got $180,000 forgiven. Wouldn't you, the average American, love it if somebody said, hey, I'm going to send you a check for $188,000. You can pay off your house. You can pay off all your cars. Whatever you need, use it for that. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't it be awesome for a middle-class person to get a gift like that? But that doesn't happen. But all these friggin' assholes filed for PPP loans. Carol Miller from West Virginia got $3.1 million in PPP loans. She's not done the first damn thing for West Virginia. She's voted against the infrastructure. She's voted against every damn thing that Joe Biden has pushed. So what has she brought to the people of West Virginia? She's brought nothing. She's given herself a $3.1 million PPP loan. But oh, be careful, folks, because whatever you do, don't vote for that Derek Evans dumbass because that son of a bitch is a real sack of shit who was arrested for him storming the Capitol and recently was in Mingo County telling everybody that what we should be doing is shooting anybody at the southern border. So how Christian is that? When Jesus Christ said, you treat the stranger as if he is your brother. You accept the stranger. You feed the stranger. And he's saying you should shoot him. So he also saying that he's a Christian. He's, he's claiming that he's super, super religious, but in the same breath says it's okay that we should be shooting people at the border. And I'll tell you right now, that guy's a piece of shit. And I'll tell you right now, it wouldn't bother me. I'd go to jail. I'd, be, I, I'd, be, I'd have no problem smacking his friggin' teeth. I'd love to rattle his friggin' chain. I guarantee you he's a colossal pussy. They take for themselves while doing nothing for their constituents. Yep, that's how all of them are. And once again, that's how the Republican base is. And you can't prove me wrong. Look them up. Look them up. You, there's such a difference between the Republicans and the Democrats in Washington, D.C. The Republicans can get nothing done. They are absolutely a bunch of buffoons. They can't even pass any legislation whatsoever. That's what the Republicans are. But you look at the Democrats and look at the bills that they push. Look at the things that they do. If we can win back the House, we're going to see cannabis basically removed from Schedule 1. There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be done. We're going to put term limits on the Supreme Court justices. And we're also going to make sure that there's a code of ethics for them. And if they go against the code of ethics, any at all, they're gone. And that's what needs to happen. People like Clarence Thomas needs to be removed from the court. Then they will gripe and try to turn the poorest amongst us against those who take loans for college to try to elevate themselves out of poverty. That's a fact. These Republicans want to look at the, uh, the poor people who may never have had the opportunity to go to college and try to make them enemies of the people that went to college and want to make them enemies and tell them that the reason why you're poor is because we're giving all this money to these, these, uh, these people who went to college to try to elevate themselves out of poverty. When the truth is, is if there's any chunk of money that goes to anybody that's meant to screw over the poor, it's what they give to the freaking top 1%. And that happens every damn time a Republican wins freaking office. And you know I'm telling the truth, and you know you can't prove me wrong. Why would we give money to other countries like Ukraine when we have people in America who suffers. Now listen to what I just said. And how many times have you heard that? And how often do you hear that? And how is that still a talking point with everything that we do? Because make no mistake about it. Every time you hear that, it's coming from who? It's coming from a Republican. A Republican tells you, we're not going to give to Ukraine because we got people in the United States of America that are struggling. Really? What about America first? Okay. Okay. So uh, I understand that these Republicans that say that every single time we push legislation that's meant to help people Put money towards mental health services, mental health services to try to get a lot of these people that are all, uh, homeless on the streets off the streets and the help that they need. 
And every time we push legislation to put money towards being able to, to help people with mental health, the Republicans vote against it. So when the Republicans sit there and they look at these people that are mentally deranged on the streets, homeless, they want to sit here and say, we don't want to give no money to Ukraine because we got these people that are homeless in America. We should be giving money to overseas. But you vote against helping them. That's a fact. That is without a doubt. There is nothing about that that's a lie. That is 100% spot on. The Republicans are constantly fighting. The Republicans vote against infrastructure. They vote against infrastructure and then have the gall to stand in front of a camera with a shovel and act like they're the reason why that bridge is being fixed or that new road was created that makes it quicker to get from point A to point B instead of going over the damn mountain. They vote against that shit. But then we'll stand up there and take credit for it, which is why anytime you see a Republican standing in front of anything at all that deals with infrastructure, you need to check their freaking voting record because I guarantee you they're lying to you. It's also important to know that this comment is 100% used by every Republican out there, especially MAGA Republicans. We don't need to give those people nothing. The talking points surfaces 100% of the time when a bill is pushed that is meant to help people. And the GOP votes against it all the time. 100% they vote against it. They voted against veterans. They voted against mental health services. They voted against children's education. They are killing education in this country because they know that dumb people are easily duped and dumb people vote Republican. Dumb people vote Trump. If you're a Trump supporter and you still think that that man is sent by God, you're not a smart person. They vote against medical care. They're going after Social Security. They want to go after Medicare. They want to go after the Affordable Care Act and they've got nothing to replace it. They vote against feeding children at school. And you know I'm right. They vote against everything that helps Americans. And then they go on Hannity and say, why help Ukraine when we have problems? They vote against the solving of those problems every single time. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a bill that has bipartisan support that has accepted, been accepted by the Border Patrol Union. The bill that Republicans voted for, that Republicans helped craft, that absolutely will create more jobs for Border Patrol agents, will create more jobs for judges to be able to charge, to try the cases of asylum in a speedy manner. They money to be able to buy the best detection equipment that money can buy to be able to catch fentanyl before it crosses the border. And all the Republicans that worked on this bill and voted for this bill turned right around and then voted against it because Donald Trump told them, kill the bill because I need chaos at the border. Now, a lot of people that are smart enough realize he's done, he's doing that because he, ref he doesn't want to solve the problem. But that's how the Republicans are. They don't want to solve any problems. They want to be able to say, look, Look at, the, look at these poor people in America. We don't want to give no money to Ukraine. But then they're going to vote against giving money to the poor people because they don't give a fuck about the poor people. They would have no problems turning around and giving all that money to some friggin' daggone oligarch, some friggin' multi-billionaire, if they thought that maybe a little bit of that would trickle down because it never trickles down to the people. It does trickle down to Congress. Those friggin' Republicans do get, you know, they get their coffers filled by these fucking assholes. And those assholes know that as long as they give money to the Republicans, then the Republicans are going to do as they're told. Because why? Because they're all a bunch of fucking bootlickers. Fact. It's important for everyone to understand exactly what the hell I'm talking about. All right, folks, let's check out what kind of memes of the day John's got for us. Hunter's Laptop! Hunter's Laptop! 
Sunday, mostly sunny, 43. Monday, mostly stormy, 50. Hey, look, folks, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mostly stormy. That's the weather, folks, and it's coming. And let me tell you something. Right now, Donald Trump is looking at his daggone clock, and he's realizing that he's got to get in bed soon because he's got to get up early and put on his friggin' orange face bullshit, and he's got to get to court because tomorrow his court starts. After all the things that they could possibly do to try to push the dates off, it ain't going to happen. Tomorrow the court starts. And I'm sure there's going to be a couple more things that they're going to try, but make no mistake about it. Donald Trump is going to be found guilty here. Without a shadow of a doubt, we know without a shadow of a doubt that the money was paid. And once again, it's not illegal to pay somebody hush money. It's not illegal. You can give your money to anybody that you want. But the problem was, was that when they were questioned about it, through Congress, they lied. And when you lie, that's a different story. Now it becomes a felon. And that's what he's facing right now. And he's going to lose because the evidence is absolutely there. And it is stacked against him. And there's not a damn thing that he's going to be able to do to change that. And when this is done, he's going to be convicted. And let me tell you something. There is a lot of people out there that are waking up every minute and are switching over are saying, we're done with the Republican Party. We're done with the infighting. We're done with the fact that they can't get shit done. So a lot of them are switching. You've got a lot of Republicans that are already going on camera saying, I voted for Donald Trump in 2016 and 2020, but I'm not going to vote for him in 2024 because I think that he is a fragile turd. Uh, and at the end of the day, once again, a lot of people also are saying that if Donald Trump is convicted of any charges, that is all they need to say, I'm out. And he's going to be convicted of this hush money trial. There's no doubt about that. And you know what? I really want to see him spend at least one night in a prison. Because I'm going to tell you, Mr. Mr. Tough Guy is going to cry like a schoolgirl with a skinned up knee. Because there's nothing tough about Donald Trump. Donald Trump can run his mouth because Donald Trump knows there's people around him to protect him. But Donald Trump is a colossal pussy, and he's always been a colossal pussy, and I guarantee it. All right, let's see another one. Trump hits the panic button. With just days before his New York criminal trial, Donald Trump sent a flurry of panic messages on his social media app with one in particular clearly violating his gag order. The Post attacked his former attorney, Michael Cohen, a key witness in the case. So what Donald Trump is doing is illegal. He is attacking a person who is meant to absolutely go and sit on the stand and basically be questioned. So Donald Trump is continuing to break the law. My thing is, is put his ass in jail. Make his ass stay, let him sleep in jail every single night that this trial is going on. They can get him up early in the morning. He can come to the friggin' bag on, uh, uh, to, the, to the courthouse. He can change out of his orange jumpsuit, put on his suit, and sit in on the trial. But let me tell you something. If he's going to continue doing this, he needs to be held accountable. Anybody else out there that does this automatically goes to jail. Donald Trump is doing it, and they keep giving him a pass. And he's only going to get worse and worse and worse if all you're going to do is slap that orange turd on the wrist. Put his ass in jail. Let him get the experience of what he's going to end up living and what's going to become his life after these trials. All right, let's see another one. Politicians should wear sponsor jackets like NASCAR drivers. Then we know who owns them. That's a fact. And Democrats or Republicans, I don't give a shit. That's what needs to happen. You know, when I was running for president for those whopping two months, the only reason that I wanted to run for president is because I just wanted to make it to the debate. Because if I would have made it to the debate, make no mistake about it, I may have never won the presidency, but I can guarantee you that when I got done ripping everybody a new asshole, people would be talking about that Ojeda guy. Because let me tell you something, don't you dare tell me that you're going to fight the opioid epidemic when I can check and see that you take money from Big Pharma. Because if you do, you're a lying sack of shit and you know it. All right, folks, that's our 30 minutes. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Uh, I enjoy doing this uh, and I appreciate each and every one of y'all taking the time out of your day just to listen to what the hell I got to say. I don't know how many we all have on here, but folks, we need to really pick up our momentum. Let's get more people to follow these pages. I, I want to see 600 people on Facebook and 600 people on YouTube every night. So uh, whatever we do, folks, let's get the people fired up. 
And everybody go to turnleftpack.org and get you an Ojeda Live shirt. All right? We got I, I want to see them. I want to see uh, John posting pictures of people wearing their Ojeda Live shirts. Folks, y'all be good to each other. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Sappers clear the way. Airborne all the way. Hot, ten, hot. Eyes right.